Hello ladies and gentlemen, Simon here and we have another reaction video for you. This time I didn't delete the episode um, for Vikings, which is what happened last time. Um, those of you who may remember, episode 3, I watched it, recorded my reaction, and because I'm silly, I deleted the file accidentally, so I did a review instead, so I apologise about that, but this time, I promise you the reaction is coming. Um, so yeah, last time we basically just dealt with the fallout of Ragnar and everyone else returning from their journey to the west. Um, the Ale wasn't necessarily too pleased, but he didn't outright kill them, which is kind of what I thought would happen. Um, he did kill a little 13-year-old boy, um, because, you know, the treasure that he'd been given by Ragnar had to be buried somewhere, and this kid was helping to bury it, and whether they didn't want anyone to know about it, so they killed him, or whether what they were actually telling him about was true, or, like, they needed someone to guard it on the other side in Valhalla, I don't know. It wouldn't surprise me if either sort of reality was true, because, you know, the Vikings, they believe in Valhalla, um, but again, the ale, he's dark and probably murderous. So, um, yeah, that was a bit harrowing. Um, other than that, we saw um, the monk sort of ingratiate himself into to Ragnar's family. He's not being treated as a slave, um, even though that's what the premise of him being there was. Um, Ragnar seems to be treating him a lot more equally, um, even inviting him into the bedroom, you know, which he refused. Um, you know, he's got a lot of willpower, that monk. Faith is a strong thing, you know. Um... And we saw that Rolo is not best pleased with Ragnar and how he's handled the whole situation. You know, they went across to England, they got all this loot, they come back and they have to give up that loot to the L. Which, I mean, to be honest, I don't really know what they were expecting because you go back home, do you, do you expect everything to be, you know, fine and dandy and there's been no repercussions and you just get to keep your treasure? I mean, they didn't think that part out too well. Um, but then he stole some stuff. So his development as a trouble character is going apace. And I've got a feeling that there's going to be some interesting stuff coming up for him. Um, other than that, it was, you know, it was kind of like a low-key-ish episode. Just kind of like, you know, settling us back in and again setting out the, the propositions for the next few episodes. You know, the L has promised that, um, you know... They can go west again. He sanctioned an expedition. Um, Ragnar tricked the monk into giving the location of, um, you know, other kingdoms and, and, you know, obviously the locations of who was in charge and, you know, where all the loot is. And we saw them arrive. And in what was a very odd kind of meeting on the beach, you know, the king's men, who obviously have not had a lot of combat experience and were visibly in intimidated... Didn't fare too well, but one did get away, and so we can only presume that the king is going to be warned about the Vikings that are incoming. So, um, yeah, we're going to pick up from there. I am aware that the second episode has been blocked. Um, I'm going to try and get that sorted and re-uploaded um, within the next few days, but I can't promise that. So, you know, we'll, we'll just see how it goes. But anyway, let's jump into it and see what happens. <laughs> Again. We attack tomorrow. Uh, Rolo, everything that Rolo is suggesting, Ragnar's going against. It is a large town. We have only a few men. That surprise is our biggest advantage. Attack at night. What day is it today? Saturday. Saturday. Everyone's yeah, Sunday. Everyone's going to be off. You will understand tomorrow. We must wait a little longer. Wait. What for? Just wait. Is it because everyone's going to be in church? And listen. So they can congregate everyone in one area and then for? attack. Yep, they're just heading straight to the church. But how did Ragnar know about... I mean, I must have been the monk. The monk must have told him about... You know, everyone gathering on a Sunday. Hmm. Now we get blood spilled in a holy place. Now, the last priest who tried to talk to them didn't end up 
in a good place. God bless. <laughs> He's smarter than the average Viking, Ragnar. They will not hurt you, except for the ones they've already killed. Might want to blow out the candles first. No, don't don't spit on them. Blow them out. He's got to get his axe bloody at least a little bit. Come on, Rolo. That's not the real Rolo. Come on, you're just playing with him, aren't you? You're just playing with him, aren't you? Wine. Floki's being introduced to wine. <laughs> He just spit out the blood of Christ. Yep, yeah, okay. Well. Oh, no. Oh, did he just call her a bitch? Okay, she's gonna murder you. Yep. Yeah. No. Oh, yes. Rip it off. I mean, I like the music, but it really didn't fit for that, like, scene. You know? It's like, the tone was completely different. Oh, they're waiting for them to return. Okay, we've now got the more experienced soldiers. Oh, that was close. <laughs> Go for the legs, guys. Go for the legs. Nice. Lifting them up on the shields. I mean, the British, or the English, I should say, aren't very smart. They should be going low, under the shields, you know? It's no good being in the larger number if your soldiers aren't trained very well. Have they even killed one Viking? Oh, yeah, they have. There's one Viking. I had a Wilhelm scream in there. <laughs> very, very faint Wilhelm scream. But it was there. So yeah, at this point we're learning that no matter how many the English bring, because they're not very trained, um, it doesn't really matter. We must avenge his death. Dude, you came to this land, in the name of King Ayla, attacked King their Ayla people. Must suffer for it. I want to make a sacrifice to Thor for my father's safe return. What will you sacrifice? You. you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I like this kid. We have similar ways of thinking. Kill the monk. No, nah, I'm kidding. I like the monk. He's, um... Does he have a name? Has his name been mentioned? I can't remember. The town would not be happy with this. I mean, Ragnar has got to be one of the most popular people. This is the start of the Ale's downfall, I feel. Yep. Has Rolo been selling him out this whole time? And you are so under his thumb that he has persuaded you to lie for him. May Thor strike you dead. Oh, she's feisty. We have proof. We have oh, here's where Rolo. The betrayal. Come on. Come on, tell the truth. Ragnar Lothbrok killed him. No, Lord. For a good reason. Come on. What Ragnar Lothbrok has sworn is true. Ha 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 ha. half-brother was caught raping a Saxon woman, then he attempted to rape her. Rolo, you're a despicable human being, but you're also glorious. Unfortunately, you cannot 
punish him. <laughs> I've got a feeling, though, that's... <laughs> oh, God. He's not happy. And I think Rolo's going to pay for that. And they are some massive pine glasses. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Yep. This is the revenge. Holy crap! Even when they are wrecked and unarmed. <laughs> I like that. Even when they are ruined, like they are drunk as hell and unarmed, they still killed a bunch of them. Gods have always been favorable to me. They allowed your sons to die. Uh, wow. Way to bring up that pain. Do the gods really exist? Oh, shit. feel the tension building. Okay, so that was certainly more intense than I expected it to be. Um, so yeah, the raid on the um, on Hexham, um, which is a town I've never been to, but I know of, and I know where it is, and it's... Um, <laughs> I couldn't make a joke about it, not looking any more advanced, um, but I have not been there. If it had been something like, you know, a town that I knew, I could have made a joke like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, this was an episode that had a few surprises for me, just in the way that some characters really acted. Um, you know, we saw, obviously, the raid. Um, Ragnar was very intelligent about the way he's got about this raid, and I think that's one of his key attributes, is the fact that he is very smart. He's learned a lot from the monk. Um, you know, at first you're kind of thinking, okay, well, is he just looking after this monk just out of the, the goodness of his heart? And then you're like, no, you know what? He's actually doing this to gain information. Um, and whilst he's done that, he's probably, you know, developed a sort of um, attachment to him. And, you know, he's learned that on Sunday, everyone goes to church. And with this being back, you know, in the uh, sort of the seven or 800 uh, AD um, sort of time period, everyone is religious. And so everyone goes to church. So you're going to get no resistance from any of the town watch you're not going to get any resistance from any of the people they're all going to be grouped in one specific place and that makes it easier to go about the village and loot um i think you know obviously anyone other than ragnar may have just wandered in and killed everyone um because you know we saw that they didn't hold back from the monks so why would they hold back from normal town folk um but he you know one of the things that did surprise me is the fact that this episode, he went from one extreme to the other. You know, he went from offering um, leniency to the townsfolk, um, obviously experiencing what Canute did. And then on the beach after the battle, he I think he had a rekindling of his Viking traditions and his Viking ways. And, you know, he killed that soldier um, in the way that, you know, you would expect a Viking to act. And again, it's just so funny how it kind of paints... I mean, I can see it changing more and more, but it, you know, initially it's painting these people as the protagonists, as the good guys, even though they're going around stealing, killing innocent people, um, you know, doing things that generally in any other civilized nation would be, you know, would earn you the death penalty. And... Um, you know, but I can, I can definitely tell that, you know, the show is trying to balance it out more and being kind of like, hey, you know what? Yes, we're portraying these guys and the story from this their point of view and they have some redeemable qualities. But, you know, keep in mind that um, the stuff that they're doing isn't good. You know, it's not quite there, but it's it's kind of showing signs of that. Um, some of the scenes are like genuinely uncomfortable to watch, you know, like the whole Canute thing with him, you know, raping... Uh, the woman, uh, that was difficult to kind of watch. Um, 
but it's an accurate representation, I guess, of, of how the Vikings were. And, you know, it, it played its part in the advancement of the story when he tried to, um, you know, to, to rape Ragnar's wife. And, you know, I was I was thinking to myself, why? Why would you do that? She, You know that she can fight. You know that that's Ragnar's wife. I mean, were you in a frenzy? Were you, was your mind not in the in the game at that point? It's like, it didn't really make too much sense. Um, and then obviously we get back to the village. And, and I mean, I kind of thought that maybe Ragnar won't lie. Maybe he will just, you know, tell the truth. Because, you know, that's obviously, if he thinks the gods are watching, that's what they're going to want. Um, but no, he, he substituted the lie that I would have gone for and said he died during the battle with the, the, the English on the, the beach. And he just substituted that for he killed him. So either way, he's lying. But one lie gets him into trouble, um, whereas the other lie doesn't. I mean, maybe the ale would have still said, I don't believe you, you know. Um, but then I guess everyone else could have come to his aid and, and tried to defend him. I don't know. Um, I mean, it all worked out for the most part, because, you know, obviously Rolo, who, again, a character who I was sitting there, and when they were trying to convince him to betray Ragnar, I was sitting there thinking, this is up his alley, this is, I mean, they've built in the in the three or four episodes we've had, they've built up that kind of jealous tension between the two, um, whether it's because, you know, he's jealous or he's unhappy with the fact that, you know, Ragnar is in charge and he's giving him orders, or whether it's because he's jealous of his wife, um, you know, which that certainly seems to be a way that they're going. It certainly seems that Rolo um, is in love with, um, you know, Ragnar's wife. And I thought this is the perfect opportunity for him to do that. But maybe, you know what he was thinking? And this is exactly the motivation behind it. If he lied in front of all those people and he condemned Ragnar, that would have lost his chances I mean, as slim as they are, but that would have completely alienated... Um, is it Agatha, I think is her name? Um, it's something like that. Uh, but that would have completely alienated her against him, and he could have just couldn't do that. It's not that he was bound by any kind of family or love or tradition or, you know, guilt. Um, it's just that he didn't want the wife the Yale offered him. He wanted another wife. And um, he turned down a lot, you know? Um, favour with the Yale like marrying his daughter, um, stepping into the limelight, you know, getting rid of the brother who, you know, is far more popular than Rolo. But he is a complicated character. He's not a, he's not a good guy by any stretch of the imagination, and you kind of realise that after, you know, he explains his reasoning. You know, at first I was thinking, oh, okay, maybe there is some redeeming qualities to, to Rolo. Like, you know, you see him um, not kill the old guy, you know, early on in the episode when they're raiding the, the town, you know, and I thought for certain that he was going to, you know, chop him, and that was, that wasn't the way he was done, so you're thinking, okay, maybe he's, you know, maybe he has actually got some redeeming qualities, and then by the end of the episode, you're back to, hmm, not really, um, but yeah, I mean, I just love the fact that, you know, this group, no matter what is thrown at them, like, I was sitting there, and when they were all drinking, I was thinking, what if the ale decides to try and get revenge on them? You know, because that seems like a reasonable thing for the L to do. Um, and, you know, I was sitting there thinking, well, they're all drinking. They're all absolutely wrecked for the most part. What if someone just attacks them right now? And um, that's exactly what happened. But, you know, credit to them. They would have, they, they were t totally inebriated. They were unarmed and they still managed to kill all of the, uh, the attackers. Um, yeah, they did lose... Um, one of their own in the process, and, you know, that sucks, but, hey, the, the fallout from that is going to be very interesting to see. I don't think the ale has got long left on this uh, on this planet, um, because, you know, he's gone and attacked his own people, um, and I don't think he's as bound to tradition and the gods as, you know, you would have thought, you know, he was questioning faith, and I think that's a theme through this episode, is questioning faith, you know, the monk questioned his faith, at the end of the episode, the ale questioned his faith as well. And, um, you know, once someone is unbound by that, it could end up being a bit of a a dangerous thing. So it's going to be interesting to see where the show goes. So I'm really enjoying it so far. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying it as well. 
And so, yeah, we'll wrap it up there. I thank you very much for watching, guys, and I will see you for the next episode.